cracking, y'all? I got some new toys. Two of them. One, two, grinders. Two grinders. Hand crank grinders. I made a whole video a long time ago about how I hate hand crank grinders. Now I got two of them. So these are the Commandante hand crank grinders. They're made in Germany. I scored these at the NYC Coffee Fest that I was at last month. Joe McTee straight hooked it up. So thank you, Joe. Super hookup. And I got to chat with Burned, 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 B-E-R-N-D, Burned, who owns the company. It was really rad talking with him because he's super passionate about what he makes. He's not just like, oh cool, I'll make some stuff and see if people like it or I'll get some crazy person somewhere else to manufacture it and we'll see what happens. He's attached to these. So I got two of them and I figured I'd open them up. There's two different kinds and just go through them with you. Open there. Ah, uh -huh. oh, always cut away from yourself. I want to see it too. Ooh. Look at that. So, ooh, take it out and we'll talk about it. So we have two jars, got a darker colored jar, light jar. These both attached to the base of the grinder. Got the grinder itself. It's really, really heavy. Not in a bad way, it just feels like it's not a toy. The jars screw onto the base of the grinder and pretty self-explanatory, the handle pops on the top. And you can use either jar. Good choice. Packaging's really nice. The box is really beefy. He signed them for me, which I was pretty psyched on. Have fun. I freaking will, dude. Why do I usually hate hand crank grinders? I've had the Hario Skirton, the Hario Slim Mill, Horlex. I've given them all away because they're all pretty much, I don't want to say they're worthless, but they're more toys than they are tools. They're more things that you have that's fun. Oh, this is cool in the kitchen. I'll play with it a little bit but none of them are really built that well. And the Porlex was supposed to be built really well, and compared to something like the Skirton, it was built better, but it still wasn't that great. The burr finishing on all the grinders was totally suspect. None of them had what I'd call really sharp or precision machining. Another thing was that they all had a decent amount of burr float. So where the bottom burr set sits up against the ring, those are all conical grinders, they all kind of wiggle around. Now the Skirton was the worst offender, and that one's impossible to adjust because it doesn't have the click to adjust. It's just you have to disassemble the grinder to adjust it. The Slim Mill and the Porlex Mill had an adjustment like this to where you click it around, but they still had really bad burr flow. And it took a really long time to grind and it was just obnoxious. For starters, there is no burr float in here. Let's give you a closer look at that one. I can wiggle this thing around all day. There's no play in it. This thing is solid. The center shaft here is set on ball bearings, so it turns really, really smoothly. And again, it doesn't wobble back and forth. Click to adjust, just like most other grinders of this type, although these clicks, again, feel beefy, just like the build on this grinder. It just feels really beefy. But the big thing is the burr set, how it's machined, and what it's actually made out of. So I got the chance to see at the show all the levels of machining and polishing that the burr set goes through. Burn had this little case, and I think there was five or six different versions of the same burr set at different various points in their machining process. And the first two looked like kind of something that you would get in some of the other hand crank grinders, and that's what they'd send out as finished. But this thing is polished and it's finished gnarly. Let's take it apart. Let's see if I can take it apart without breaking it. Oh. I don't actually think the camera's doing it much justice. I wish I had my old 50 millimeter 1.4 so I could get real close, but the machining and the finishing is really, really nice. This is the outer part of the conical set. You can see how the burr carrier is bolted in there. So to throw it back together, just burr set, make sure you have the spring on it. Put it onto the little shaft there. Get your little micro adjuster doodad. Twist it till it catches. And then once it's on, you can twist it here or you can just hold that in place and crank the knob. So aside from the machining, which is really nice, the fit and finish, which is really nice, the burr steel is also pretty unique. It's a really, really hard stainless. And Burn, the guy who owned the company, was saying that people give him a lot of shit, like, oh, stainless is really soft. And he's like, not necessarily. There's different levels and different types of stainless steels. And the only reason I know anything about this is because I'm slightly into knives. So this is a Benchmade Osborne, and this is D2, which is a tool steel, so it's got some stainless qualities, but it's really, really hard. It will rust if you leave it out. Compared to some of the other knives I have, like the Paramilitary is S30V, which is a common stainless knife steel. Anyway, there's all kinds of different stainless steels, all with different edge holding properties and different levels of hardness. So I don't know the makeup of this steel, 
but it's apparently really hard and it's also supposedly inert. So it's not porous. It doesn't pick up any tastes or flavors. Theoretically, you could grind something like pepper on this thing, any kind of spice or whatever you want, and then shift over and grind coffee with it directly afterwards and have no taste cross-contamination. Should we get in a box too? I'm pretty sure we should, so why two grinders? Because some people are insane. The guys at Commandante definitely seem like they're the insane type. Same jars. I got some baller bands, you know what I'm saying? This is the most gangster instruction manual I've ever seen. It's all in German, no English. So this is the Commandante C40 Ironheart. Same construction, same basic grinder. This one only comes in a metal wrap. What do you call this thing? Metal body? It's not wood body, metal body. My freaking battery just died. Everybody loves a Sony A6500 and I like the image quality, but seriously, the battery life makes it almost just ridiculously unusable. Anyway, slightly different burr geometry and slightly different burr material. The steel on this is even harder than the one on the regular C40. It's also not an inert steel. So how we're talking about, you can grind spices and grind whatever you want on this guy, then come back and just grind coffee. You don't wanna do that with this grinder. This one needs a little bit more cleaning, a little bit more maintenance, a brush out every once in a while, especially if you're using it with things that are high acidity. So like, what's the big deal with these two things? Why am I even kind of excited about it? Couple reasons. One, the quality of the manufacturing and the work that went into these is in Sane. And I think that's super special in an era when you can have an idea, manufacture it overseas, and you get something that's kind of cool, but it's shoddy quality. This is engineered. This thing is built meticulously. And I freaking love that about it. I talked with Burn the owner for a while and we really connected on producing something that's super special, not just a random, just like, the, it's just a piece of shit. It's like the world's flooded with a bunch of different things, random pieces of crap. Everyone wants to make stuff, which is rad. I love the opportunity, but it's like, you come out with these half-assed things. So this is solid. I said I would never own another hand grinder and this thing changed my mind. This is actually a grinder. It's not just a toy. Horlex, Slim Mill, Skirton, they're just toys compared to this thing. So I like that, I appreciate that about this. The second thing and the main reason I really wanted to play with these is the fines production is supposedly really, really low. I don't have a sieve here, but we were looking at it at the show and I was really impressed by the particle spread of this grinder. And they're claiming this is like a hand crank rival to EK43. So theoretically, I can take this into the shop, grind coffee with enough adjustability and find this here, throw it in a porta filter and rip EK style shots with it. So the geometry on this is supposed to favor what you would do with a lighter roasted coffee, more aggressive brew ratio, really delicate flavors, open flora, those big traditional, you know, you're running 40, 50, even more grams out on an EK shot, the big time light roast bangers. Whereas supposedly the Ironheart's geometry lends itself to a little bit more of a traditional espresso, more body, richer, just deeper flavor. Something you'd pull like chocolatey, short and nasty. Not short, but you get the idea. So these things aren't designed specifically for espresso. They're for all kinds of coffee brewing, but I'm really interested in them for espresso because if they really can make EK quality shots, I think it could be a really cool tool for someone to have at home or for someone to use in a lab. We have a wholesale training tonight. So my goal for tonight is to take one of these grinders, I don't know which one I'm gonna use, take it to the cafe and see, can I pull passable espresso with it. And if I can, that's a whole other can of worms and we'll talk about that later. So I'm gonna pack this up, we're gonna take it down there and then we'll do a wrap up after that. It's late, I'm gonna make some espresso. Here, PayPal was actually in here filming for a commercial earlier today, so there's all kinds of weird camera stuff going on. I wanna just get this dialed in, see if it can really pull espresso and then once I get it close, I'm gonna use it throughout the week and see what happens. 14 clicks out. No static in there, which is kind of nice. Nothing's really sticking to the glass. Whoa! Shot number one is very fast, very fast. We got uh, 45 grams in 11 seconds, so we're gonna need to 
tighten that thing up a little bit. I had to do shot number two on a seven. I was at a 14, it was super fast, but looking at the grind, I think I over adjusted. So I think this is gonna be really, really slow slash maybe won't come out at all. How does? 28 seconds, zero grams out. Shot number three seems promising. That was a lot better. Still a little slow. I got 45 grams out in about 45 seconds. I'm doing a really big shot, something that's gonna emulate that single origin EK style espresso. So relatively high dose, 22 grams. And we usually pull those mid 40s out in the cafe. So not as big as some people who are running that 50 to 60 gram slammer, which our roasts do not do well at that level. Anyway, I know for some people are like, what the fuck, that's huge. It's really not. That was a little more acceptable flow rate at 27 seconds and it started to pick up pretty quick at the end. Normal EK shots that I like are low to mid 20s. I've got this gut feeling that this might be where this one wants to be. It doesn't smell like it's gonna be astringent or dry or over extracted. It smells really good, good aroma. I'm not gonna drink it because it's late at night. I'm not even gonna go there. I'm just gonna leave it at that. All right, quick wrap up after using this for espresso for about a week. Is it usable? Yeah, the shots taste really good. Does it taste like an EK 43 shot? No, I don't think so. I think it's a little less delicate than an EK 43, but I think it's got a little bit heavier bottom end, maybe more round, rich sweetness, less of that like wide open thing. I really, really like it a lot. It almost tastes like a cross between like an EK-43 and like a Rober. Would you wanna use this for espresso? Not really on the day to day. It's a lot of cranking and even though this thing works really well and is built really solid, it's still a lot of arm work to do espresso on this. So, you know, you wouldn't really have this for an espresso grinder, which why would you? I just thought since they said you could, it would be fun. I don't know. It was great times. Grind adjustment on it. The clicks are relatively large. So my sweet spot was at 11 and I ran a bunch of different coffees into it and they all kind of settled into that same sweet spot at 11. And when I cranked it down to a 10, it was a big change in flow rate. So shots that were flowing in the mid to late 20s, once cranked down to a 10, you'd get extraction times of 35, 40, it adds a lot of time. So something like smaller steps would be nice to dial it in a little bit more precise. I was able to find a sweet spot pretty quickly, but depending on what your roast level is and how much of a range of different coffees and roast levels you use, you might want a little bit more adjustment. Cool thing about the adjustment is that it held its adjustment really well. I had it set at 11, I completely disassembled the grinder, put it back together, and when I clicked it back in, 11 was still the sweet spot. So that's it for now. This video is really long, so I wanted to make this quick. It was really fun to use this for a week and taste things in a different perspective. You get used to tasting the coffees that you taste all the time off of the burr set that you usually grind your coffee with. And it's really easy to forget that just a change in burr geometry using a totally different grinder can bring out all these different flavors and make you see a coffee in a little bit of a different light. So at the shop, we got the EK and the Peak, and then this was just a cool little different animal to experience. Looking forward to using this for making some pour overs, maybe do some French press, just some standard brews with it and not espresso, which is what most people will use it for. And as I use it, I'll keep reporting back to you. And then once I get deep in that and flush it out, we'll move over to the iron heart and see what that is. Really had a good time with the grinder. Build is awesome, super fun tool, looks sexy. I don't know, check them out. You might as well. It's a little pricey, but you know, just depends on how you want to party. All right, y'all stay dialed and I will catch you on the flip side. Peace!